lunges, trying to bust through the hole, and gets it. That lower down, trying to bust through the hole. Folks, welcome to the Foxborough Sports Center. I'm Javik Blake. Welcome you to a big Wednesday night tilt for the Lancers as they will go up against the number three ranked Hopkinton Hillers in a big TVL matchup. The Lancers coming into this game 4-7-2. and two. They suffered a defeat in their last game to Dover Sherborne by a score of 5 to a game where during the second period they just lost it all. They allowed four goals and ended up getting down by three at the end of that period. Was able to claw back but ended up as a 5-2 defeat. On the other side, the Hopkinton Hillers come in riding one of their best starts in team history. 10-2-1. They've already made the playoffs and the look can continue their year where they finally try to get over the hump and make it past the final rounds of the D3 state tourney. They've won seven of their last eight. A loss last game dropped them to that second loss of the year, and they stand currently third in the TVL at an 8 2 and one clip. So alongside me here in the booth is Greg Bernal. And Greg, this is shaping up to be a big game for the Lancers, but they look severely outmatched on paper. Well, on paper, you're right, Javik. That's true. And of course, it's going to be hard to top the last action we covered here at Foxborough Sports Center. Uh, but Hawkinson comes in red hot, like you said. They're one of the top teams in the state. They have much loftier goals than they have in any year that we've seen them. Uh, it's going to be everything Norton can do to keep them at bay. Though one of the good things for the Lancers tonight is they do get back Clint Gallagher, who's one of those presents, was a big presence on that defense and forward line as we've seen this year. So his play should greatly affect how the Lancers play on offense tonight. Yeah, and I don't know how much tape Hopkinton's seen of Norton, but if they haven't seen Clint Gallagher on the ice, they might want to take note. He is their Swiss Army knife. We said that time and again. He's an emotional leader. He's a coach on the ice, and he can do just about everything for the Lancers. They'll have to keep him in check if Hopkinton wants to keep Norton at bay. And returning from that two-game suspension, Greg, he was able to maybe rest a little bit. You could see later on in those games, he was maybe getting tired in the middle of the year. It's good to just have a nice little break, and now he's back, and his legs must be fresh and ready to go and have a lot of stamina for tonight, which is something you need against a Hopkinton team that is very fast. Yeah, you know, Coach Grosso has used Clint a lot in a lot of different roles, defense and, and on forward and at center as well. And I think that can wear on a player who gets a lot of ice time. So there's two games off, and it's really been two weeks of inactivity for Clint. Uh, it would be a great opportunity for him to get back out and see if he's rusty or if he's rested. And two weeks of rest for Clint Gallagher. The Lancer team has only played one game in the last 11 days. They should be rested, but as you said in your keys to the game, as we go into those, it's either rust or rest. Yeah, which, which Lancer team will we see? Last time they took 10 days off, they came out and really slept walked through the first period of that game and then turned it on later. Against Hopkinton, you absolutely cannot afford to come out slow. They'll bury you early if they can. So it would be very important, as you said, that they are come out rusted, rested, not rusted, if you will. Uh, and the second key to the game would be the fountain of youth, right? Lancers have a lot of young players that have to contribute. They're going to need every bit of their talent and their youthful energy tonight if they're going to stay in this game with Hopkinton. And finally, it's time to rise up. Norton plays its very best games against the top competition in the TVL, and we've seen that every game we've covered. They're going to have to have a similar effort tonight. And Hopkinton on the other side, they're led by a very good coach in Craig McPherson, who has had one heck of a run, 47-9-4 over his last three years with the club, and he's really done a fantastic job growing this program and building them into the perennial powerhouse, which is led by Will Abbott on the offensive side. You know, it's funny, you don't think of Hopkinton's hockey team as the powerhouse of the TVL, but they've beaten all the big guys. They've knocked off all the all the Goliaths, if you will, uh, and now they're rolling here to the Foxborough Sports Center, and maybe they think they got a cupcake on their hands with Norton. And we saw that earlier in the year with Dover Sherborne, who they thought it was a cupcake, they actually didn't even dress their starting goaltender, and they paid the price. If Hopkinton plays like that, they might pay the same price. Well, you know, that's the thing about Norton is they do play big in big games. And if you sleep on Norton, just like you, know, you can't sleep on Hopkinton, they could surprise you. Well, we'll see all that coming up next. We'll have the starting goalies break down the starting lineups and then puck drop from right here at the FSC. It's the Norton Lancers and the number five ranked Hopkinton Hillers coming up next right here on LSN. Hello folks, welcome back to the FSC. I'm Javon Blake alongside Greg Bernalt. And Greg, as we look into this matchup, Hopkinton, they've been a great team all year, but they've really been a force away from home. They're 6-1-0 on the year, scoring 55 goals all in total. Yeah, Javon, we looked at all the stats before the game and this afternoon in our pre-production meeting, and we have yet to find anything we can pick on for these guys, except maybe the fact that they're ripping off the University of Miami's uniform scheme. 
And the Lanch, on the other hand, they've had their struggles at home. They're 3-4-0, but they have had the better than away. Away, they're 1-3-2. And, and to make the playoffs, they, this game, they really have to keep it close, get some points, because if they lose this game, their backs are really against the wall. They need to win five of their next six. That would put them in a position to do that if they lose tonight's game. Yeah, it's getting late for the North Lancers when it comes to playoff contention. Like you said, they've got to win most of their remaining games. And they don't have an easy schedule to do it. Tonight would be a, 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 a huge upset for them and would definitely boost their chances for the playoffs. And Hopkinton, with their high-flying attack, they're averaging 4.23 goals a game, and they're only allowing around 1.7. And if they, the Lancers really, they got to really get that offense going if they want to put some goals on the board. Yeah, I mean, I think the good news for Norton is their defense is pretty stout, and they've been pretty good all season on defense. I guess we'll see what kind of firepower Hopkinton really brings tonight. And Evan Kazadi being moved back to the defense once again. We saw it in the Foxborough game. That worked out very well for the Lancers. Grasso hoping for the same effect tonight. Yeah, I mean, he's a big, strong kid, and he's proven all season long as the season has gone on. He's improved throughout the season. I think it's great that Grasso is rewarding him with an opportunity to play in the back line. And one of the things we saw last game against Dover Sherborne, that Lancer fourth line really stepped up big. Fasolino and Gilbert both scoring goals. And if they want to, they got to really get their move on tonight and really be able to create some chances if the Lancers want to win this one. Yeah, you need goals from somebody other than Joe Giuliano, Clint Gallagher, and Brendan Hayden tonight. You've got to find another way. Justin Goldstein's another person that can step up here and sneak one in and get get the Lancers an early lead. And in net for the Lancers tonight, none other than Triton Dose Race making his 14th start of the year. He sports a 4-7-2 record and a 3.33 goals against average. We've said it every broadcast this year, Greg. He is the backbone of this Lancer defense. Yeah, it all starts with Triton, which is unusual. You don't usually start with your goalie, but he's kept them in a lot of games, and he made some miraculous saves this year. He's going to need another big night tonight. And definitely, Hopkinton really puts on an onslaught of shots, and one of the problems for them that has been is keeping the puck in the offensive zone. The Lancers have had trouble doing that, and Hopkinton's a team that loves to press and keep the puck in the offensive zone, create a lot of zone time, create a lot of shots. Yeah, you know, and Javik, they're loaded from, from a senior standpoint. They've got a lot of experience on this team. They've been here before, and they've got their sights set on a state title. They're not going to let Lancers down up once they've got them down. And in net for the Hillers is Dylan O'Reary, the senior number 31 making it another start. And he's really done a fantastic job winning this team to the last seven of eight victories. Yeah, you know, interesting to see his style of play in the warm-ups at least. He seems very, very confident in that for the Hillers, and he has every reason to feel that way. Well, if you only face 12 shots a game, why wouldn't you be confident? <laughs> My point exactly, David. And the Lancers head coach by Eric Grasso in his third year here with the program. And as we said in the intro, Chris McPherson at the helm for the Hillers, his seventh year and a 73-56-10 and record. So, Greg, any last thoughts before we go to puck drop? Very important that the Lancers start fast. You know, as you said, they tend to rely on their defensive zone coverage and then wait for opportune moments to break out. I don't think that's a good strategy tonight against Hopkinton. These guys are deep. They can bring the offense, and they will bury you if you let them. If you let them. So the Lancers looking outmatched on paper, looking to prove that wrong as they up again, go up against the Hopkinton Hillers, the number five ranked team in D3 South. It's the Hillers and Lancers coming up next. Puck drop right here on LSN. Hello, folks. Welcome back to the FSC. I'm Javik Blake alongside Greg Bernalt. And Greg will get ready to go here. Players lining up with a face-off dot. And the Lancers trying to get some momentum towards that latter half of the season in their final push for the playoffs. They only have about three weeks left in the season. Yeah, here it goes. All starts tonight. Clint Gallagher and DJ Sloan in the dot. And we're underway as this one goes back into the corner. Your starting lineups tonight. First for the Hopkinton Hillers, you have Matt Lindquist. Andrew Gilbert, Stephen Simones, DJ Sloan, and that one is just one. That one goes just wide. And you have Will Abbott, really the catalyst for this offense as that one gets sent all the way back. And Dylan O'Leary will play it. On the side for the Lancers, it's Brandon Hayden, Quint Gallagher, Justin Goldstein, and Lorden and Giuliano making up the defensive core. So this one will be taken up now, a rush for Hopkinton. Giuliano gets turned around as that one will go into the corner. Steven Samoes has it in front. That shot goes just wide, and it's Matt Linguist who gets it around on the other side. Plays it behind, and it looks played over as that one's poked out by Dose Race. And play back in the zone by Saporashets. It's Brendan Hayden who has this one now. Trying to capitalize off a of Hopkinton line. Hayden has had skate in the Lancer zone and put that one wide in the net, and he'll dump and change. Behind the net, that one will go. It's Connor Delaney, one of the captains for Hopkinton, picking this one up. 
Sends it on over, but Giuliano's there to intercept it. Inside the blue line, the shot that was blocked by Sapporo Shets, and that one will go behind the net. Great energy to start for the Lancer, Shavik. Hamble will bring this one up. Looking for a cross-ice pass. He gets it to Temple. Through the neutral zone with a good move. Temple on the shot. Saved by Dos Race. The second opportunity blocked and out of play off the stick of Tony Cersei. Yeah, so two things right off the bat, Javik, for the Lancers. First of all, Justin Goldstein, an absolute pass just where he left off against Foxborough, keeping the Hillers on their heels. And then Clint Gallagher again, instead of a line change, kept the forecheck on to buy his teammates time to complete the line change. The Hillers will send their fifth guy out there, Connor Delaney on the defensive end. And it's Walsh who gets thrown out of the faceoff dot, but Hopkinton winning this, Walsh controlling it. Back to the point now, we'll throw it in behind the net. McCarthy chips it on the glass now, and now it'll be brought up. Hopkinton, if he's in the opening, does a very good job at keeping that puck in the offensive zone and getting a lot of offensive zone time. S one's taken to the corner, looking to pitch it back up to the top. He gets it, plays it back down. Behind the net it goes. McCarthy will have it. 13.07 left. A good opening two minutes for both teams here early. Looking for a centering pass now. This one will work. Inside the slot, but it's taken away now. It's Patrick Donahue. He'll bring this one up into the neutral zone, but it's chipped away. And Lindquist making the good move as this one's chipped down. Evan Kazani will go after it. Chased by Walsh. Walsh is able to time up for just a second behind the boards, and now Cazani will grab it. Takes it to the corner. Goldstein drives played up. Can't get it out of the zone. This shot. Looking for an opportunity. That one doesn't work because that one will go just wide. Goldstein will race down to the corner to get it. As this one. Shot on net. And saved by Dose Race. Looking for a rebound now is the Lancers. This one gets sent back out to the top. Looking for an opportunity. That one, the redirect, gets blocked. It was off the stick of Will Quinlan. Yeah. Goldstein has this one. 12.09 left in the first period. Yeah. Excellent organization by the Hillers on offense. As that one will go down, icing is the call. Greg, if you're number five team in the nation, if you're number five team in the state, you don't get there by being not organized at offense. They've shown they're really organized in the offensive end, keeping that third guy high and keeping that puck in the zone. A very polished, crisp looking team. The Lancers, though, to their credit, excellent works, keeping their spacing, not chasing the puck, being in position at all times. As this one will be dropped, Gallagher in the dot. This one back out to the top. As Hopkinton sending a man down deep behind the net, Nabbit. He'll take it behind. Looking for an outlet pass up top. He was looking for Gilbert, instead plays it over and Gallagher takes it away. Lancer centered down in the offensive, way deep in the defensive zone as that one shot up. Looked for a streaking Hayden as that one will be in front of the net. Looking for a cross ice pass, that one doesn't work. It's one of those risk reward plays, Javik. They got a guy streaking deep, but they left themselves exposed in the defensive zone. That pass up to Gallagher was intercepted, and Giuliano had to play back on the defensive end. Morden takes it behind the net, plays it around to Cersei. Hits it up and over Hopkinton defenders. It's right back to Giuliano. I think the Lancers need to employ more of that, Javik, in their strategy. Instead of up the boards, they got to loft the puck deep and go and chase Andrew, it. Andrew Gilbert went back to the bench. Now it's Joel Giuliano bringing it into the zone. The shot, that one goes just wide. The Lancers still without a shot on net here early. Not a whole lot of rushes, but that was their probably their best opportunity of the night so far. It's Sapporo Shets bringing this one up to Warden, who chips it off the boards and has to fight off of the attacker. This one kicked away. It's DJ Sloan who has it. And a cross ice pass here to Steven Simones. Now he winds up and fires. Not a whole lot on that shot as that one goes wide. Blocked by the stick of Dos Race. Sapporish has it. The sophomore shifts it down to Walsh. Over to Giuliano in the corner here. Oh, excellent play by Giuliano to stop. So many times, as in it, instinctively, you want to charge the puck up the ice, and you can see that he was outnumbered. He held back, let the pressure move by him, and then fired the puck up the ice. Now I went for icing, but I, I like the idea. He's at least thinking out there, how do I make this play work? And with that first line out for the Lancers, back out once again to take the draw. 
we really have seen this Lancer team. They've been calm and composed these last few games opposed to earlier in the season where they were just frantically trying to get the puck out of the zone as Hopkinton off the faceoff has that one. That one goes right behind the net off a deflection. Yep, and if you're having Kazada, you got to push that kid right out of the crease. Clint Gallagher bring this one up. <laughs> one gets kept in the zone by Gilbert, but he gets blocked by Lancer in front of the net. That one doesn't work. The cross-ice pass just tipped away. Great work by Brendan Hayden. Walsh, the sophomore, playing it behind the net, but he can't get it around McCarthy. Back to Hayden, who's going to try to break it out of the zone here. He looks to Gallagher, overruns the puck. And this will go back into the zone, off the boards now. And that one will be brought up. Gallagher flips it in. O'Leary putting this one away, and that'll be slid all the way around the boards. With McCarthy controlling it past the red line. Back into the neutral zone. Kept in by Lindquist. Over to Gilbert and brings it up. Brand new group of forwards out for the Hopkinton Hillers as they make a line change in the back end here with 9.03 left to go in the period. This one will be brought back. Temple sending it down ice and another line changes. He'll go back to the bench. It's Curtis Terry coming out of the Hopkinton bench as it's Evan Kazadi controlling this one. Hopkinton controlling Zone time by a large margin here in the first period as that was shot is blocked by the blocker of Triton Dose Race. This one will go into the corner. 8.32 left to go. We're about halfway through the period. And great, this has been all this has been all Hopkinton. It has, but the Lancers haven't looked panicked in their own zone, and they haven't given up a ton of great chances. The shots on goal here halfway through. Just 4 nothing in favor of Hopkinton as that shot would have been a great opportunity for Sephora Shets to get a goal, but it doesn't work. Lancers are getting a little bit more physical too, Javik. It's a smart play, smart strategy, I would say. That's what you like to see from this Lancer team. They aren't, they aren't seen as a physical team, just a gritty team that gets deep into the zone. But it's what they got to do to, to make up for the speed and size of this Hopkinton team. Yeah, I definitely think that today is the game where they want to exert themselves physically on the Hopkinton. They don't seem to have the kind of physical stature to match up with the Lancers, and the Lancers are willing to throw the body around. And we'll get icing here off the of Lancer line change, which they switched out all five players. But it was Kyle Rogers who ended up getting tied up there, couldn't get a stick on the puck, icing the call, and we'll go all the way back to the Lancer zone. You know, Javik, another piece of this is as the period goes on, if they can just continue at this pace, the, the, the Lancers are like boxers. They take a bunch of punches, but then they can surprise you with a stinger all of a sudden. As it's Giuliano playing this one forward, but it gets taken away. Intercepted by DJ Sloan. Giuliano going for the hip check, but he goes around him. Now it's a three on one in front. Dos Ray somehow comes up with a save. Kept it in the glove. And we'll have a face off on a three on one. That is a fantastic play by Do Triton Dos Ray. Keeping the Lancers in the game early. Guy all alone on the doorstep, and he makes the save. That is a beautiful play. Maybe that'll ignite some energy in the Lancers. If you're Hopkinton, you are. Mightily frustrated on the bench. The best opportunity there is that one off the faceoff. Just missing. Doesn't get on net as it gets deflected before it can get there. If you're Hopkinton, that was your best opportunity tonight. You couldn't convert in a three on one. That's got to sit off some warning bells as Dose Race is able to save it. Kept it in between his arm and the post. Dose Race showing up with a highlight real saves here early. Yeah, a few of those, a few more of those, Javik, and the Hillers will be scratching their head. What do they have to do to beat this kid? We'll call it the Dose Race effect. <laughs> so Lancers winning the faceoff here. Giuliano sending this one down ice. Now Hayden on a rush. O'Leary will have to play it. Just like Marty Burdor will send this one down oh, the ice. Oh, they're going to get Hayden. And they're going to get Hayden for slashing. Took a shot at the goalie on the way by. You know, one of the things I have never understood as a hockey fan through these years is how protective refs and players are of the goalie when he's the most padded individual on the entire ice. Yeah, the guy was like 40 feet out of the net. He should be fair game, shouldn't he, yeah. Javik? I say we didn't run him. <laughs> Heavily influenced by Marty Berdor. We'll put it at that. <laughs> so the Lancers on a penalty kill here early. They've done a good job this year. 86.6%, 26 of 30. As this one's sent over. It's Connor Delaney. Behind the net, it'll go now controlled. Well, it's important the Lancers maintain their discipline in the zone, though. You gotta, can't lose your box. Giuliano looking to send this one out, but instead they'll get a rush out of it. Tony Cersei's tripped, but no call. The refs say they just lost his footing. 
Will Abbott will bring it in, trying to add to his season goal total as that cross ice pass just missing. No one there to put it home as they get it back to the top. That's an example of the Hiller's offensive prowess. That looked like a nothing play, and it, out of nowhere, he's on the back doorstep. Delaney has it back up top, pushing this one forward as that one goes just wide off the stick of Steven Samoes. Okay. Bringing it over to Delaney, all alone as that shot just wide, almost nailed Clint Gallagher in the face as it went by. Mm. Lindquist playing it back on the Lancers, going to the diamond formation here as that shot saved by those race. A good opportunity for Hopkinton, but they weren't able to get a rebound out of it. Now maybe it's just me and we've only seen them for a little less than one period, but it seems like to me the entire Hop Hopkinton offense is centered around people in front, in front of the net with tip-ins. I haven't seen much power power from the, from the point at all in this game so far, Javik, and no really good shots from deep. And that's one thing to look out for as we get later in the game, and that's maybe something is that one will go just behind the nets. Maybe that's something that the Lancers can exploit as that one will get sent down the ISO area to play it. Maybe that's something the Lancers can exploit with those bad, uh, bad shot chances, because there's race being as good of a goalie as he is, one of the top in the TVL. He's able to save a lot of those shots, as with 37 seconds left in the power play, all the way through the zone is Hopkinton, looking for a pass back, they get it to support Shets. His shot goes wide, he's actually blocked in front of the net, and the mad dash for the puck, but Giuliano's able to wrestle it away. Yeah. 23 seconds left to go in the penalty, go 5.29 left in the period, it's 0-0. They'll play it over. It's Gilbert. That shot. Blocked and will go wide. McCarthy laying in the body. They'll go back to that diamond formation. The Lancers have got to do a better job of getting their man out from in front of Joe's race. Hayden about ready to get out of the penalty box, and he does. A poor power play for Hopkinton. Only one shot attempt as Giuliano plays it over to Goldstein. Ships it up. Hayden will try to grab it, and they'll send it down the ice off the stick of Drew Support. Shets, and that one will go down the ice. Adelang on the body now, looking for a pass in front. Click Gallagher winds up and fires. That one goes just wide. And a fantastic opportunity created by the speed of Gallagher. Hopkinton will go the other way with it. It's Sean Walsh bringing it forward on a four on one. And he lost his footing on what looks like a good chance. And if you're having Kazadi in that play, you got to bury that kid. That's your only chance. He's definitely quick. It's Lindquist bringing it up to the slot, but he's forced out by the Lancer attack. That shot in front. That'll go in. It's Matt Lindquist scoring the first goal of the night, and that'll put Hockeyton up 1-0. Oh, it's just such a tough break for the Lancers after all the great defensive plays they've made and after the great work the Triton Dos Reyes does to have that one just trickle in over his shoulder is very frustrating. So the score here will be 1-0. That's just one of those plays, River Triton Dose Race, you've made as many highlight reel saves you have through that first period. You gotta get a pass on that one. Yeah, he's gotta flush that one and move on. There'll be plenty more to come. High blocker side was able to get that one home from Matt Lindquist, the senior defenseman, netting his first goal tonight and the first of, if you're a Hopkinton fan, hopefully many. And we'll get offsides. Yeah, and I think it's really important, Javik, for the Lancers right now to not put their heads down, right? They've battled back. They've come back many times this season. They've been seen adversity. I think if the next goal is the Lancer goal, then this is about this is a hockey game. And this one will be one off the faceoff. Linquist has it, plays it up to Hopkinton, and they'll get into the zone. The centering pass doesn't work, and Tony Cersei trying to get that one out. The captain will play it in deep. They have two men up high at the point. They'll feed it to one of them. That shot in front blocked before it can get on net by Pete Mitchell. But once again, a Hopkinton player in front of the net with a stick free to tip the puck home. You've got to move those people out from in front of the net. 3.53 left here in the first period. Hopkinton leading 1-0 thanks to a goal from Matt Lindquist at 10.48. DJ Sloan, Clint Gallagher on the faceoff dot as that Lancer first line out there once again. And it's taken off the faceoff by Hopkinton, but they aren't able to get an opportunity. They have to feed it back to the point. And into the corner it goes. Hayden trying to get a good opportunity on the rush, but it doesn't oh, get that it. That was outside by a mile, Javik. And Hayden playing this one down nice. Looking for an opportunity, but it doesn't work. Gets tipped away by Connor Delaney on the back end. He's done a good job on the defensive part. Sloan has it. That shot goes wide. Steven Samoes over to Sapporo Shets. 
it's Saunders playing with Giuliano here with 3.12 to go. That one in front, Giuliano tried to bat that one down. Doesn't work as that one will go all the way back to the point. That's yet another opportunity, Greg, where we've seen Hopkinton put it right in front of the net. Mm -hmm. But they've tipped it away and haven't created a good opportunity out of it. Yeah, those are one of those plays you practice over and over again. And sometimes they win, sometimes they don't. But I'll tell you, it's very, very difficult for a goalie to track those types of plays. As this one, Sapporo Shets has it. Brings it over to the dots and decides to swing it behind the net. Goldstein playing it out now. And Hopkinson will regroup. Lowlands will go for a line change. Hayden Goldstein out. And it's Cersei and Cross coming over the boards. And Hopkinson will change as well. Three new guys over as they'll change up their forward lines. Saunders has on the back end now. 2.20 left to go in the first period. 1-0 Hopkinton with a goal just a few moments ago. So go around the boards now to the opposite dots. Is Hopkinton. They'll play it up. They have one man all alone in the slot. That's Hunter Temple as this one in front. Saved twice by Dos Race. Coming up with even more highlight reel saves. That one will go for icing. Yeah, I can already give you my preview of the intermission report, Javik. The Lancers have to be more physical. they got a guy standing in front of Dos Race with two guys on him. He's playing the puck. Nobody's knocking him to the ice. He's got to be buried. That's what you have to do. You have to finish. 154 left here in the first period. They also have to create opportunities in the other end. 10-1 the shots in favor of Hopkinton. I know, and I'll tell you that Norton looks great when they get the puck in the offensive zone. They just haven't had many opportunities to get it there. Hopkinton controlling the zone time. That's something they're very good at. Something Chris McPherson really preaches to this team as that one is taken in front of the net. But nobody can put it home in a slot in a scary situation for the Lancers. Donahue sending this one down ice. O'Weir was looking for a icing call, but he didn't get it. Good hustle by Cross. This one will be picked off. Going the other way, Will Quinlan. Past the blue line, past the neutral zone in front. That nice. one is a missed opportunity with 1.15 to go in the period. That's good looking defense by the Lancers. Three guys back checking to get back to make sure there wasn't a, an odd man rush. Both teams switching up lines now as we're ticking towards under a minute to go. Crucial last minute of this period, Javik, for the North Lancers. Grabbing this one behind the net as Hopkinson comes rushing into the offensive zone, but it's taken away right back into the slot. The opportunity saved. One too many moves proved costly for Sean Walsh. You absolutely nailed that, Javik. One too many moves. Very cute, trying to toe drag and dangle through the slot to try to fool those race. He had a completely wide open corner of the net if he just fired the puck. And Walsh has to be second-guessing that opportunity there. So he'll go to the dots. Plays it back out to the top to Delaney with 52 to go. Honestly, Javik, I find that it's one of the biggest kryptonite for some of these more talented teams is they want to do it fancy, they want to do it cute, they don't want to be effective. Well, especially against a team like the North Lancers where you look at their record and they don't look like a team that's scrappy and really fights for every point, which is one they do. But if you just look at paper, mm -hmm. the Lancers are one of those teams where teams think they can afford to be cute. And then they play it out in the real game, and it doesn't work so well. And all of a sudden, we're at a one nothing game with 30 seconds to go in the first period. Oh, yeah, you know they've been talking about it all English class long. Oh, I'm going to do this tonight, I'm going to do that tonight. And they get punched in the face a little bit, and now it's not so not so easy. As this one, towing the line now as that one will be brought into the zone. Joel and Giuliano will grab it with 12 seconds to go in the period. Looking for one last rush for the Lancers, but it gets tipped. This one in front, the shot saved by those race. Golcino will bring it up. And Giuliano will be buying Dose Race two soda seconds tomorrow. to go. That one on net. And that's where we'll end the period. one nothing, Greg. Well, I'll tell you, despite the score, I think if you're the North Lancers, you, you go in the locker room at the intermission and you breathe a huge sigh of relief. That was a great escape to that period. So the score through one one nothing. We have us an intermission report coming up next right here on the Lancers Sports Network. Hello, folks. Welcome to the Foxborough Sports Center. I'm Javik Blake, welcoming you inside our booth alongside Greg Bernald. And, Greg, a one nothing period in the Lancers, as you said at the end of that period, have to be breathing a huge sigh of relief. Hey, if you told me coming into this game that they've been playing Hopkinton and they come out with a one nothing deficit after one and look composed during, during the process, I'd say, hey, take it as a win. They did do a very good job composing themselves eventually on that penalty kill. They, Hopkinton wasn't able to convert and was only able to get one shot on net, which, thankfully for the Lancers, didn't amount to anything. 
Yeah, I mean, the Hopkinton loves to circle the zone and try to find the right opportunity. They're all about the guy in front of the net and the misdirected shot and the tip in. And I think as long as the Lanterns can somehow combat that or adjust to that in the intermission, they have a better chance in the second period. And one of the things they do need to step is their physicality when they want to leave that guy in the slot. We saw that a few times throughout the period with that guy directly in the slot. And the Lanterns can start getting physical, force him out of the slot. Then that creates a world of problems if you're Hopkinton trying with their tip ins. Yeah, there are two areas I think Norton should be more physical. One in front of the net, which we harped on a lot in the first period. But number two, even along the boards, these kids don't want to be hit. I can see it already. You start hitting them a little bit, they get a little less cute with their toe dags and their dangles and stuff like that. Send a message in the second period. We're not going to let you do that on our ice. And that was very much what Hopkinton did for that first period. It was just one too many moves that proved costly. It was, and I think that's a function of do they think they can walk all over Norton? They can do whatever they want, or did they just how they play? Is how they play hockey? So I guess we'll find out in period two how they adjust to this. Now on the other side, the Lancers they did a very good job creating those offensive zone chances. They just didn't get a lot of time, thanks to Hollis Hopkinton really controlling the offensive zone. You know, it's funny. It's hard to say that they look electric on the offensive zone, but they look a lot more effective offensively in the very limited chances they had in the first period than we've seen them all season. This is a really team we've seen grown throughout the season, and this is more of a mature point in the season. And it seems like that's where they're maturing right now is offensively now. Now, granted, this is a great team they're playing against, so the chances they get, they have to make count, but they look good when they get them so far. So the stats at the end of the first period, the Lancers only with two shots on net, two good opportunities though, and Hopkinton with 12, Matt Lindquist with a lone goal at 10.48. Lance is also getting out face off one, but they've done a good job in the defensive zone. And Dose Race has really stepped up, as you said in the intro. He needs to be that guy in the back line. Well, he's been that back guy in the back line through one. I'll tell you, an average goalie, this game's four nothing right now. Hopkinson. So Dose Race, they deserve the. They got to buy him a soda intermission. So if you're Coach Grasso, what are you saying at the intermission, guys? Hey, great that you weathered the storm, but we can't win if we don't score. We've got to get some offensive chances, and you got to beat these kids. You got to beat them up a little bit. You got to push them around, you know, within the rules. But you got to make these send a message that you're, you're here for the whole 60 minutes. We'll try. Triton Dose Race, Brendan Hayden and Clint Gallagher and the Lancers coming back out in the ice in just a few moments, trying to get that one goal back and tie this one up at one. Through the first period, it's 1-0 Hopkinton right here on LSN. Hello folks, welcome back here. Start of the second period, the music's rocking, the Lancers seem ready to go. We're trying to erase this one goal deficit and try to tie things up. You know, Jeffy, this is going to be a huge start to the second period. If the Lancers come out hot, it could change the whole complexion of this game. So Quint Gallagher on the faceoff dot, setting this one back into the Hopkinton zone as Joel Giuliano sends it down the ice. And the Lancers immediately going for what looks like a line change. Lorden changed his mind at the last second. Mm. This one taken by Gallagher. That shot goes wide as it was deflected away. This one will be taken up now. It's Will Abbott sending it back. And Hopkinton will try and create an opportunity. Lance is not letting the Hillers get set, set at all offensively. Is this one behind the net now. It's Will Abbott sending it around the boards. Gilbert has it on the other side. And this man right in the slot tries to get it back, but that one's saved and kicked away by Dose Race. Yeah, good stick work by the Lancers in the defensive zone, Javik. Carrying behind the net now. Warden will take it on the far boards, chipping it forward. But it's blocked just like a catcher mm. at the blue line. Immediately a line change for Hopkinton. Hayden will go to the bench to lead by Tony Cersei as he jumps over the boards. Giuliano is able to kick this one out. Now we'll stride forward trying to get this one and puts on a little bit of a shove as icing is looking to be called. Trent Dose Race was calling for it, but the Lancers didn't get it there. As that one's played over, Delaney has it. That shot gets blocked, and now the Lancers will try to go the other way with it. We'll get icing here. 13-28 left in the second. Still 1-0 Hopkinton. Was that icing or was that outside, Javik? I can't figure it out. It didn't look like it was from farther off out. But, it, but here's the good news for you, Lancers. Very composed, not letting anybody in front of the goalie. All the things they need to do to stay in this hockey game. As this one will be dropped here, Hopkinton winning the faceoff. And that's right, Greg. The Lancers have really been one of those teams. As Hunter Temple goes sliding across the ice there. And one of the things the Lancers have done is they've been very composed in their own zone, which we haven't seen a lot this year. Mm -hmm. They just can't be guilty of chasing and swatting at the puck. Oh, is this one sent around Giuliano, but that one will be taken out of the zone. And the Lancers will get to relieve the pressure for just a bit. Hopkinton will take it up. Plays it around. 
So it's good play. It's crossed with a big hit there as Giuliano takes it on the back end. Tries to play it up to the neutral zone with a backhand to pass. Doesn't work as Walsh plays it over and this one will walk in. Hopkins it plays this one to the top, winds up and fires that shot. Oh. That one will go wide. Played it into the corner. Cersei will grab it. And the Lancers trying to get this one out of the zone. It doesn't work for the Lancer defense right now. Seems a bit discombobulated. They might be cheap. It seems like they might be guilty of chasing the puck here yep. in the early parts of the period. But now Goldstein will try and bring this one up. It's him and three Hopkinton Hillers. Is this one to be taken down ice? Giuliano sends it up, but he's met by four Hopkinton Hillers, and now all five of them are helping to break this one out of the zone. Oh, now it's a three on one. Now it's a two on one. Hopkinton has the numbers. Looking for a pass. They get it. That shot's saved by Dos Race. Unbelievable save by Triton Dos Race on that play on a two on one. The next shot saved again. The third opportunity saved again. Dose Ray standing on his head during that rush and saving what could have been three good chances at a goal. You know, Javik, running out of adjectives to describe how well Titan Triton Dose Ray plays in these games, in these big games. He is literally keeping them in this game. This could be five or six nothing right now with any other goalie. Uh, at this point, I think we need to bring out Doc Emmerich's The Source. <laughs> I have a subscription at thesource.com, in fact, Javik. You know, the Lancers really got to do a better job of helping out Dose Race. They can't let him. You know, save them today. They've got to do a little bit more work defensively. And they have been guilty of that before, relying a bit too much on him. And they haven't created any offensive chances here in the second period. But they have Hayden leaking down ice, but the pass doesn't work. And Hayden will have to retreat back into the zone. Warden over to Kazadi. 11 mm. 22 to go in the period. I like a little bit of what I'm seeing here from the Lancers. That shot in front oh. off the post. <laughs> what an opportunity. The goalie's best friend helping to save that one there. As I was about to say, Javik, the Lancers are doing a better job of making the smart play in the defensive zone. As this one chipped in off the rafters, and well, folks, it's in Tropicana Field, so we'll get a whistle. <laughs> is uh, that a double, Javik, or is that a foul ball? How does that work? That's in play. So much needed whistle by the Lancers. The very, to your point earlier, not composed in their defensive zone, struggling to find a way to get the puck across the blue line. We'll take the whistle to do it. This one will get sent down ice, saved by Dose Race, and we'll get a face off. So you know, you're five minutes into the second period, and Hopkins has carried most of the play, but I think some of the things that you've seen from Lorton is they're remaining composed in their own zone. Even when they're disorganized, they don't seem to be out of control. That's good. And Dos Race will scoop that one up. He'll save it. We'll get a face off. 10.43 left here in the second period. Still 1-0 Hopkinton. If you're just joining us, Matt Lindquist scoring the goal in 10.48. And it's really been a game that Hopkinton's controlled most of the offensive zone time, but Triton Dos Race has stood in his head all night long, making a couple of high rate eel saves that should deserve to find their way on Sports Center. And if you if you like good goaltending, Jevic, this is the game. You should have been tuned in from the beginning. And this one is blocked, and the Lancers will try to get it out of the zone. That shot goes wide. Wow. And now Gilbert running into the boards. They're going to call Gilbert for that, I think. Oh, my goodness. Holding will be the call. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about that call, Javik. That didn't seem anything egregious to me at all, but Lancers are down a man now. Very important penalty kill for them. Hopkinton's penalty power play hasn't been too great tonight. They got one shot out of their first attempt, as this will be their second attempt tonight. Billy McCarthy skating off the bench to get the faceoff done. As this one, one by Hopkinton. That shot will go wide. And it'll be played back. The Lancers back to the box. They'll play to the top as Hopkinton. That shot again. Seed by Dose Race. Crowd loves that save, Javik. That is one of the that is an epic save by Dose Race. So as we bring it back in the Foxborough Sports Center. 
Oh, As this one break. sent down ice, Hayden trying to chase after it. He can't get to it. The speed of Steven Samoes winning out. Now here comes Hopkinton bringing the speed. It's Samoes looking for a move. Brings it to the Slactos race. Flashes the weather and saves that one. Another amazing save by Triton Dose Race. An excellent presence of mind by the Lancers. Hawkington is very fast, Javik. That's one thing. This is, this is the fastest team I think we've seen all season. And this one will be brought up now. DJ Sloan bringing it into the offensive zone, into the slot in front. Opted to go, trying to just drag it home, but it doesn't work. Connor Delaney, that. that shot goes wide. There's another tip in front. You've got to move that guy out of there. 101 left in the power play for Hopkinton. Whatever chances they didn't have in the first power play, they're making up for it now. Yeah, a plethora of ones here as the Lancers will play this one down ice. O'Leary to corral it. They look like a different team offensively from, from Hopkinton's standpoint. They certainly got the message at the intermission break. Goldstein is spun out of his shoes there, and now this one will be brought up. Sloan bringing it past the neutral zone into the Hollister. Hopkinton attack. Is that one in front? Dos Reis will save it. A little bit of pushing and shoving in front of the net as Will Abbott was trying to poke it home. Yeah, more pushing and shoving is needed in front of the net, Javik. you got to get those kids out. I'll tell you, one of the things that's kept Norton in the game, besides Triton Dose Race's excellent play and goal, is some of the selfishness we've seen from Hopkinson. A lot of guys alone out front, and the and the, the wing would prefer to take it in himself and try to stuff it in past Dose Race. You know, sliding that pass across to an open man is a surefire way to get a goal. 33 seconds left in the penalty kill for the Lancers. Trying to stave off another fantastic Hopkinton rush. This one will be brought back up to the tap. It's Sapporo Shets. That one in front. Wow. Blocked by the leg pads of Dose Race. Goldstein shipping at this one in the corner now. As that shot from wide open opportunity misses, and Goldstein will try and send this one down the ice. He does, gets it out of the zone, and Hopkinton will have to regroup. And that's what should. And the power play, and it will. 0 for 2 on the night is Hopkinton on the power penalty kill. Power play, that is. Eight shots on that one. Lance was need a whistle bad, Javik. They spent a lot of time in their offense, on their defensive zone, and that one saved. Excellent work by the Lancers. I know they're gassed right now, and I know they were under an onslaught from the Hopkinson power play, but they survived that power play, that penalty kill, and now they have a chance to recharge, get some fresh bodies on the ice, see if they can change the momentum back in their favor. The Lancer 5 back out there. And the faceoff here will be taken and batted nice back into the zone by Andrew Gilbert as that shot will go wide. A second chance opportunity taken behind the net. It was created by Clint Gallagher, interestingly enough, on the back end. Yeah, great work by Gallagher Giuliano, trusting each other on the defensive side. And this one in front taken away, and now it's Giuliano to bring it up over to Hayden, but it's just off the stick and off chase this one down. Looking to play it in the corner, he shoved in. This one sent down the ice. That one will go wide behind the net. It'll go. Warden uh -oh. trying to play it in front. Dose Race can't quite save it. And that one will go home. 2-0 the score. It looks like it was DJ Sloan with it. And it's now at 2-0. Yeah, and the sequence has started with so much promise for the Lancers, Jerry. They really look good coming down the ice. They were great four check, really caused some confusion in their offensive zone only to have it come back against them and have a guy wide open in the slot for the shot to a pretty much open net as Dos Reyes was struggling to get back into position. And after that goal, interestingly enough, Brendan Hayden's walking off towards the locker room. Yeah, Not sure like what's limping. wrong there. He went into the corner pretty heavy, Javik, when he was chasing that puck, and he was you know, battling along the corner, so maybe something happened there. As that shot in front... Would have been a great opportunity to put it home. And if you remember, he had that scary knee injury a few weeks ago yep. in the Ashland game. Hopefully that isn't, hasn't come back up as the Lance will now try and bring this one up. It's Goldstein. That was great work by Goldstein. get it. It's Will Abbott bringing it up now. Looking to shot, saved by the leg pad as that will ring out. That'll be a good opportunity for Abbott to skate that puck around the net and find a guy open in front. Both Lancers were chasing him. The shots here, as we're about, as we're a little more than halfway through the second period, 24 to two in favor of Hopkinton. As that one home, and that one put in on a second chance opportunity by Steven Simones, and the floodgates have seemed to open. It's now three to nothing. 
Yeah, you got to be careful if you're the Lancers now. You really got to buckle down and try to fight with some pride here. Come out of this game, try to keep the deficit where it is. You know, again, a man standing alone in front of the net, nobody pushing him out of there, no, no body contact at all, left to do whatever he wants to do in front of a you know, defenseless Triton Dose race. And a good second opportunity there for Siemens Samoz. Got the first chance, put it home with that second chance. Was able to put it in the back of the net as Sean Walsh will bring this one up. Looking to make it 4 nothing. he can't as Dose race spreads the pads out. Knocks the, po knocks the go off its moorings and we'll get a face off. Mm. Hopkinson looks like a much different team in the second period, Javik. Much faster, much more crisp offensively. and haven't let the Lancers up off the mat at all in this period. We'd have to think they're one of those teams that thought going into the game, we have this on paper, we have a good opportunity as that one's blocked wide and we'll go into the corner. They have a good opportunity. Maybe mm -hmm. they thought they didn't need as much energy, but as soon as they realized it was a one nothing game, they turned the Jets on here in the second as that one will be brought into the zone. One too many moves there as that one will go wide. Oh, this penalty coming up on Hopkinson. Into the corner goes everybody. Somebody fighting for it. It's Clint Gallagher holding <laughs> it up. And we'll get a whistle here. High sticking the call. And a break for the Lancers here. We'll see if the Norton power play can some send some life into this team. You know, I think one of the problems is this team is the Hopkinton is significantly faster, uh, has a lot of skill, and like you said, Javik, they maybe slept walk through the first period not thinking they were going to get much of a game tonight and came out firing in the second period. And how many times have we seen a team not respond like that? Like you look at Foxborough a couple weeks ago, they came out kind of slow and lethargic and Norton took it right to them, and Foxborough never really woke up in that game. And you know, Hopkinton, a much different story, and this is maybe why they're ranked number five in the state. We've seen it all year long. Medfield, Dover, Sherborne, Ashland. Holliston, and now Hopkinton, the fifth team this year the Lancers have played, where they've had it close toward the first period, mm -hmm. and then the floodgates have opened. Even their last game is that one will go wide. Gallagher will have to pick this one up, but instead it's taken away by Hopkinton, a bad opportunity. Um, they're content to just skate the puck around all ice. They'll play this one up. Warden will take it. And why not? If no one's going to challenge you, why not skate around the ice? Yep. Kill some time off the clock. You know, having said that, if the Lancers can pot one here, it changes the whole complexion. As Cersei will backhand this one on net, and that'll be saved. That's kind of clever play by Cersei. He did the only thing he could do, kind of skated, the puck kind of floated by him. Gallagher playing it over to Giuliano here, who throws it back over to Gallagher. 5.08 left to go in the period, 1.13 left on the Lancer power play, but we'll get icing, and the Lancers seem to get a little skittish in that zone. Yeah, just a little bit too much on that pass from Gallagher to Cersei. He wanted the saucer pass that instead of float it. Uh, but I think it's probably good that he did because there was a waiting Hopkins and Hiller in the path of that pass. Yeah. And this one's in the Lancer zone here. 5.05 left in the period, 110 left. <laughs> on the Lancer power play, and they've been able to mount one shot on net here this period. That's come on that oh, no. power play. Hopkinton with those two goals from Sloan and Samoz, only 47 seconds apart. If Giuliano, I think you go. I think you take it. And it looks like you didn't, you didn't hear you loud enough, Greg, as that one will go wide. No icing call as Giuliano will take it behind the net. 43 seconds to go on the power play, and he's just sitting behind the, his own cage. Looking to play it up to Warden, New Dutch trying to chip it over to Hayden, and he'll grab it and skate it all the way back. I'm not sure whether this is a time-killing mechanism or, or something just to try and get something going in the offensive end as Giuliano will bring it into the zone and play it over. I literally think it was just that. Giuliano waiting to buy this time for the right that opportunity. that one in front! Giuliano and Cersei trying to tag team it to put it home, but it didn't work. Nice hustle by Cersei. Played back up to the top. Clint Gallagher shot, saved by O'Leary directly into the chest on the fourth power play shot of the period for the Lancers. Hey, signs of life from the Lancers here. I mean, that was a great offensive rush, good organization in the, in the offensive zone, and they finally, finally got some pressure on this goalie. 4.04 left in the period, nine seconds left on the Lancer power play, trying to breathe some life into this matchup. Kazadi's shot goes wide. Mm -hmm. A wind-up from the point, just missing, as it looks like time will run out in the power play. Just missed. This one will go down the ice now. Dose race to play it. He's oh had no. some trouble playing it this year. And that one a scary hit in the corner, as that one will go out of play. And they're going to get Triton. They're going to get Kazadi for this, maybe? 
And I think they will. Kazani will either be for boarding. It's kind of a big hit. Well, I don't know. I don't know. The conver they're conversing. I didn't see it. Did you see it? I didn't see it. All right, we can't call it. Well, home cooking for the Lancers. And they will take Kazadi mm. off here. They maybe talked themselves into it. It was a big hit, but does, was it necessarily a penalty? As Kazadi will go to the bench for cross-checking. Two minutes in the box now. As Hopkinson oh. will get another power play opportunity. Yeah, it's really something the Lancers don't need right now is another two minutes shorthanded. Well, they need to get an offensive chance, and they really can't do that down a man. As this one will be played back to the top and just snuck out of the zone by Hopkinson. It's the only one face-off win this period, and Hopkinson really skating all over the Lancers here in the later parts of this game. Donahue Good work. playing this Patrick one back out of the zone. Sorry. As Donahue's shot goes wide, trying to get the shorty, but it misses. Now a big hit in the corner. Patrick Donahue. Or Justin Goldstein, in fact, is trying to get something going for the Lancers here. Yeah, it's this funny you said that. Sorry, Javik. <laughs> funny you called Donahue, Go uh, Goldstein, Donahue. They look a lot alike in the ice. Goals uh, Donahue has definitely been watching Goldstein on the ice and watching the way he forechecks. Giuliano trying to get out of the zone, but he doesn't. Turns it over in the slot. They would advise play, but it doesn't work, and this one will be brought out by the Lancers. They've now gone to more of a pyramid formation on the power play, protecting that slot. Abbott has it, trying to find a goal as that one turned around and fired in front, but that one will go and be saved by the pad of Dos Race. The tipping goes wide here. McCarthy will try to send it around the ice, but it just misses. Lindquist holding up with Donahue in the corner. 41 seconds left in the power play, trying to play it back. The cross ice pass just misses as Connor Delaney has it. Delaney winds up, fires that one. Gets tipped away before it can get on nets. And maybe an ill-advised tip there as that one was going right to the top corner. Excellent defense by the Lancers though. I mean, despite the offensive chances. As that one in front almost put home by Billy McCarthy on his own net. And even more opportunities as the opportunities mounting here. 10 seconds left, another opportunity, but this one will be taken out, and the Lancers can breathe a big sigh of relief as Colin O'Leary will play this. That's a great penalty kill by the Lancers. A stressful one, but a good one nonetheless. And now Hopkinton will change lines in the back end. That slap shot missing in front of the net, Ooh, trying to move that kid out of there. And this one will be brought back up to the top. The power play now over, 1.23 to go in the period, and the Lancers down by three after Hopkinton explosion here in the second period. McCarthy switching out with Gallagher on the back end. Gallagher switched over more to a defensive role here tonight as that one will be brought up. Looking for an opportunity in front, Dos Race saves that one. Skates back into his net, no cover it, and the Lancers can bar up. But Breathe a big sigh of relief. Wow. Dos Reyes certainly hasn't given up on this game. And I, I love the energy from the Lancers over the last three or four minutes of this game, Javik. I mean, down 3 nothing against the team is clearly, you know, more talented, maybe deeper. Uh, but they certainly look like they got a little fight left in them. 61 seconds to go in the period. It's 3 nothing, Hopkinton. Goal scored by Sloan and Simones this period at 749 and 826 to help build this lead, which Hopkinton has outshot the Lancers this game of 32 to six. With 45 to go now, played into the corner. Hopkinton having a guy in the slots as they've had most of this game. He's been really unopposed as that shot in front, looking to get a last second opportunity. This one will be saved by those race and will cover it. Yeah, good stick work by Brendan Hayden there to do just enough to keep that player from firing a puck. And a, and a wide open Triton Dose race. It seems like that's really been the Lancer mantra here in the second period. Get that last ditch effort to save that goal. Yeah, you know, I mean, Hustle's never been a problem for the Lancers this season, and it's showing up tonight. I mean, they're not giving up with 44 sec 30 seconds left in this period. They're still fighting hard. As Hayden will try to bring this one up, but it doesn't work. Pat Donahue had a fantastic opportunity to play it up to Hayden, just couldn't get the stick on the puck. So the ref took that one, Javik. 
15 seconds to go now. They have Hayden leaking deep once again, but instead it'll be Giuliano who'll bring it up. Skates it past the neutral zone, but that one doesn't work, and it'll go all the way back into the corner with four seconds to go. Hopkinton looking to run this one out, but that will go out of play, and we're going to face off with 1.8 to go. So a great finish by the Lancers for the second period, Javik. I mean, the score is clearly not in their favor, and this is a very talented team they're playing against. But this is what you want if you're Coach Grosso. You want full effort for the entire game. The Lancers thought about pulling Dos Race for a minute with a 1.8 left. But they didn't, and that's where we're on the period. 3-0, Hopkinton putting on two big goals. That might just seal this one. Yeah, Javik, you know, I think... Look, it's difficult to be down 3-0 to a team like this. I think realistically speaking, can the Lancers come back? It doesn't look good, given how few offensive chances they've had. But they've battled hard for two periods, and I think that's what that's your take back to the locker room with you right now. So the second intermission report coming up next. The score, 3-0 Hopkinton, right here on LSN's coverage of Wednesday Night Hockey. Hello, folks. Welcome to the Ellison Intermission Report. Alongside Greg Barnall, I am Javik Blake. And through two, Greg, you really saw the Hopkinton Hillers turn it on there to get that 3 nothing lead. Yeah, it's really hard to beat talent, Javik, and that's what the Hopkinton has in spades. Uh, they showed that a lot in the second period. They controlled the entire period with only a handful of chances for the Norton team. And they really penned Norton down deep and just, let them, just took it to them the whole period long. And they really created a lot of chances. They got 22 shots in the period, 33 on the night, and they've limited... Really, the Lance chances to absolutely none. Yeah, it almost you almost feel like every Norton chance gets is magnified because you haven't seen many of them in this game. Uh, but yeah, Hopkinton has just absolutely controlled every every minute of this game for the for the for the most part. And they really they have the talent, they have the yeah. speed, and they're a fast team, and they have a lot of moves to go with it as well, which sometimes works to their detriment through that second period. But they were able to get some good chances, get good shots by those race, but those tippins as well, they might have. Hmm, what a few opportunities slide away from mm -hmm. That's right, exactly right, Javik. And I think, you know, they clearly devote a lot of time to net front presence and tip-ins because that's what they work on exclusively here in front with the Lancers. Uh, and to their benefit, you know, tr uh, to, tr to Norton's benefit, Triton Dose Race has been up to the task for the most part. He's made a number of spectacular saves and tracked a lot of difficult shots in. So the stats through two periods, the Lancers with only six shots on net. Hopkinton, as we said, with 33. But the Lancers penalty kill showing up once again. They're three for three. They've really eliminated the Hopkinton chances on the first and third one. But that second one was a scary moment for the Lancers. Well, it was. And here's what you take out of that if you're the Norton Lancers, right? It, you killed off two big penalties. You look good defensively. I mean, yes, they've controlled the play. But you've held your own against the number five team in the state. And so you're looking for positives at this point. That's one. You can hang your hat on the fact that you're down 3 nothing. But this is one of the best teams you'll ever see. And, and you're holding your own with them for the most part. So I think that's what you take out of it. So as we look towards the third period, the Lancers down a three-goal deficit to the number five team in D3 Eastern Mass. We'll see if they come out of comeback coming up next right here on LSN. Hello, folks. Welcome back to the FSC. Getting ready for the third period here is the number five Hockington Hillers up by three on the Norton Lancers. Big period, Javik. Big period for the Lancers. How much fight's left on this dog? Lancers going with some mismatch lines. It's Hayden Lorden and Gilbert out there to start the period. With the regulars, Giuliano and Gallagher on the back end. Yeah, something to jumpstart this offense, I think. And Gilbert will send this up to Hayden. The Lancers will try and get something going here. Bringing it into the offensive zone, and Gilbert will try and play it up. Nice work by Gilbert to keep that puck in, Javik. We've really seen him come into his own in these last few games, doing a fantastic job on the Lancer offensive end. He scored a game last game, his first of the season. And he's really done a fantastic job being a presence. I think he's doing what they're coaching him to do, and I think that makes all the difference in the world. And he seems like a very coachable player, which if you're Coach Eric Ross, you absolutely love that. Oh, nice play. As that one tried to be sent on over, Lorden and Caden tied up there, but that one sent down the ice. Gallagher will chase after it. And icing is the call. 14.06 left in the third. And Greg, it's been a big two weeks here in New England. Once again, the Pats going to the Super Bowl. And what else is new, Javik? It seems like it's an every year occurrence. And it's not breaking news. Now, an interesting thing is if they do win, next Wednesday will most likely be the parade, but the Lancers have senior night. So put some of the players in an interesting predicament. Yeah, I may have a conflict, Javik. I may have to attend the, you know, they might invite us on the duck boat, right? Lancer Sports Network. You never know. You never know. I think we have contractual obligations, though. <laughs> As this one will go the other way, Hopkinton will try and bring it up. Gallagher controlling it and looking to play it forward. It's one of the things I love about Clint Gallagher is, you know, guy's faster than him, but he uses his body just right to keep him off the puck. 
And this one will be sent down the ice. Goldstein trying to chase after it. And Cersei will grab it in the corner. Nice stick work. Tommy Hamlet playing it over the blue line, and he'll get called for offsides. A little how did you from Jeremy Cross at the whistle. At the whistle. So, Javik, he's at the Super Bowl. What do you think is going to happen on Sunday? You know, it's going to be a very interesting game just because of what's happened, what's been what's been reported on the Pats, the falling apart of the Empire. Mm. It'll be interesting to see how that plays, especially with Brady's play as of late. He hasn't played his best games except for that second half against Jacksonville, so it should be an interesting game. But I think the Pats will be able to pull it out, but if the Eagles' defense comes up big and Brady doesn't play top-notch, mm. that defense reverts back to its sort of older form that we saw earlier in the season. I think the Eagles might scarily win that handily. And Pat Warden chasing this one over to the corner. It's Billy McCarthy into the corner. So my prediction though, Greg, I think the Pats will win it. They just have to show up and play well. Nice pass this one sent over to oh. Hayden had a great opportunity. Tried to backhand a cross ice pass again. But oh work. gee. Connor Gilbert gets sent on the boards. That's one of those hockey tough plays. That was a hockey tough play, but boy, I'll tell you, that could have gone either way. That could have been a penalty. As that's one sent down the ice and flipped off the boards. And Connor Delaney will bring it up. So, Greg, what's your prediction for the Super Bowl? So, it's hard. I don't like to make predictions because I'm superstitious. Uh, but I would tell you that I think this game could go one of two ways. It's either going to be a complete Patriot and blowout. That one is laid on by Dos Race oh. in front, but it's put home as Dos Race. Had it squeak out from under him. It's a goal scored by DJ Sloan, his second of the night. Ah, oh, such a cheapie to give up in the third period like that. I mean, Dos Reyes makes a great save, and the puck just squirts out from underneath him to a guy standing there with nowhere else to put it but top shelf with the backhander. Tough one. So DJ Sloan scoring his second of the night at 2.45 to make it 4 nothing. This is a lead that looks insurmountable for the Lancers. Yeah, you're probably right, Javik, but I'll tell you, it's still a lot of great energy from the Lancers, knowing they're outmatched. Still fighting hard, still hustling. I think that's an important sign for this team. No quit. And now this one will be brought up now mm. by Hopkinton. Into the corner it goes. Four unanswered goals scored by Hopkinton. All start in the first period. Matt Lindquist scoring at 10.48 in the second. DJ Sloan scoring his first of the night. And Steven Samoes scoring both at 7.49 and 8.26 to make it 3 nothing. And right here, making it 4 nothing. DJ Sloan with his second of the night. So I was going to say before the Hillers interrupted me rudely by scoring. As we'll get high sticking. As a call, and it looks like we'll get a man go into the box. It'll be Steven Samoes going to the box once again for high sticking. You got called for that earlier in the period. Do the Hills just not want me to talk? Is that what it is? They're just they're gonna keep disrupting me every time I try to speak. All right, so while we have the time, Greg, your prediction for the Super Bowl. All right, here it is. So I think it's one of two things: either the Patriots completely blow out the Eagles and it's not close from the start, or the Eagles win the game if it's close. I think Brady Magic runs out if it's a close game. Now it'll be interesting to see what transpires if they do lose that game, whether Brady leaves or retires, Belichick leaving. Lots of interesting things. Should be a fun night. Sunday night, 6 o'clock on NBC. Al Michaels will be calling that as Jeremy Cross. Slow to get up there on the corner. When do we when do we get the Super Bowl, Javik? I think it's every three years they change them. They rotate between the networks every three years. So uh, we'll be in the running soon. I'm glad we didn't win the Minneapolis game, Javik. That's no fun. We're, we're cold enough. As this one sent down the ice, almost clipping the ref on the head as that one will go down the ice. Joe Giuliano will grab it 11 minutes to go. As the crowd goes wild, Javik. Clint Gallagher will bring this one up. 110 left on the Lancer power play. And one of the problems is this hasn't felt like a power play for the Lancers. It's very much just felt like normal action. Mm. Yikes. As that one way out of play into the Hopkinton bench. <laughs> Incoming. So good action here in the third period. I mean, this this again, you see a team like like Norton that's been beat up pretty good. Four nothing's the score. They know they're outclassed by this team, and yet they're still hustling, still making all the right plays, still trying to do all the right things. This is a good sign that the team is committed. Goldstein losing that draw. 
Giuliano will have to retreat back the other way. It's a two on one now. With his back to the play, Giuliano will get it into the zone, but it's able to bring it away. Kyle Rogers, I don't know what he's thinking there. He has the opportunity to snap that shot off. Instead, he wants to get cute. That's really been the story of the night for the Hopkinton attack. This one brought up by Giuliano. And he'll skate through the neutral zone. Looking for an opportunity. Tries to play it back to Gilbert, but it doesn't work. And the Lancers guilty of being cute on their own end. I love the idea. Will Abbott to bring it up. Trying to make it 5 nothing, but that one with a kick save. What an old school style stop from Dose Race. This one brought up again. Again by Abbott. That one is blocked and it'll go out of port and that one will go wide. Yeah, Gilbert just needs to hang on to that puck for one more second. Hopkinson totally read that pass coming to the middle. Much better. And the power play now over. And Hopkinson will get their man back. Abbott oh. has it. That shot in front of the net. Referee needs to blow a whistle here. It's getting, it's getting very chippy behind the net. Finally. And we'll get a penalty. Looks like it'll be roughing on number 17, DJ Sloan, who will serve his third at two minutes sentence in the box. Yeah, it took the referee a while to decide to call that penalty, Javik, but it was definitely necessary. Oh, high hits on both Gallagher and Hayden behind the net. So, Gregors, look at the rest of the Lancers' schedule. Assuming they don't come back from this game, as we have a timeout here by the Lancers. Assuming they don't come back from this game, they need to win five of their next six in order to make it to the postseason. And they have to pull off an upset at some point. They have Ashland, Stoughton, Dedham, Holliston, and then they play Foxborough one more time. And then they have one more game they have to win. It's Sacred Heart away. Mm -hmm. And these are very winnable games, four of them are, but they gotta find that one last game to win and they gotta upset either Ashland or Holliston. Yeah, and so Javik, I mean, we know that they have upset power, right? They beat Foxborough when, when no one thought they could. Uh, and that's a great sign, but I think they really do need to come up big in one of these games. I mean, it's great that they play with high levels of competition, but they've gotta kind of get over the hump there and beat one of these teams that they should beat and get themselves into playoff contention. And speaking of that high level competition, we've seen fantastic players We've broadcasted fantastic players playing for these TVL schools throughout the years. With the Beanpot starting up next week, one of the big caveats for the TVL is they've, as good as the players are, they've never had a player go far and go D1 to one of those big D1 schools, which is as much as these players are great and are fast and are really skilled out here, there's that next level of competition that isn't even close to what we're seeing on the ice. Well, it's funny. We watch this and we see some of the best teams in the state like Hopkinton you know, fly around the ice as if they're running and you know unfettered through the zone and yet these are not even division one quality college players it's amazing to me as Gallagher winds up and fires that one just wide looking for a goal there as this one will be brought down and now here comes Hopkinton hand pass called on Hopkinton number two Drew Saporashets <laughs> and he can't believe it <laughs> Hopkinton up by four. Can't believe they called the hand pass on them. How dare they? Do they know they have the orange and green on? <laughs> the so audacity. We're face off back in the zone. 147 left on the Hopkinton penalty kill. I like that the referee was gesturing to the goalie exactly how the hand pass happened. It was like a forward motion. Oh. And I think one of the problems we've seen for D1 schools is that mostly most of the kids, they go to prep school, they mm -hmm. play juniors, they do all this. And public school isn't really something that a lot of players go to before going to D1 schools. You're exactly right, Javik. I mean, a lot of these college programs are recruiting from private schools who recruit from high school towns, right? So uh, really difficult to get someone from public school to go D1. But if you have somebody like that, that's a difference maker come state tournament time. And that's definitely a huge leap for the TVL in general as a league to have that one guy be D1 talent as that pass goes just wide award and we'll mm. get an icing call. To have that guy get D1 talent and really have him light up the, light up the league and bring some a little more recognition to already one of the leagues that's seen as the Hockey East of Massachusetts. Oh, I fully agree with that, Javik. The Tri-Valley League is absolutely loaded talent at the top end especially. And I feel like it doesn't really necessarily get its due at the state tournament level, you know. And then you get teams like Foxborough that play you know, a mostly Division II schedule, all they have to do is win half their Division Three games and they get into the state tournament. Norton doesn't have that luxury. A other town like Norton doesn't have that luxury. And that one in front of the net block twice and saved by Dose Race. But that's also one of the things that can really help build the program. If you're a team like Foxborough and you only have, let's say, six Division Three games, you only have to win three every single year, 
you go 3-14 and 14 and still make the state tournament, if you're the Lancers, it forces you to get better because you have to win 10 games against some very good competition. Yeah, I would agree with you that a team like Norton, should they ever make the tournament, would certainly be battle-tested, right? I mean, they've played some of the best teams in the state, teams at a division ahead of them. You don't see that very often down here, and you don't see teams like Foxborough, you know, having that same, well, actually, somebody like Foxborough would have that same luxury. But it really forces D2. the Lancers and Coach Grosso to get better, find those schemes, and really get the players to work together and pull off these upsets that we've seen this year. This has really been a banner year for Norton Hockey. Even though it's a year where they, they're they going to have to, it seems to stretch that they might make the postseason as Cersei will send this one down the ice with 30 seconds to go on the penalty kill. It's something that it's really seemed like it hasn't, their backs are against the wall towards the end of the year to make the playoffs, but it's really something that the Lancers can say a benchmark here. They finally beat Dover Sherboard. They gave Holliston a run for their money again. They really took down Foxborough as we're going to face off here. They really took down Foxborough. They were close against Bellingham. They've had so many good games this year that if you're anyone in Lancer hockey, you can't help but smile at the season they've had, even though they're 4-7-2. Yeah, I'd say kind of leading the way are paramount to what's made that possible is the fact that Norton's been lucky to have good leadership at the top for the last several senior classes have had good strong leadership that wouldn't let teams quit that would make them battle to the end and really hold people accountable for doing their job I think that makes a difference in a program like this and it also starts with great leadership behind the bench as Julie Giuliano will bring this one up looking for an opportunity in the slots can't get it and he'll go into the net Look at a pat in the pack from Dylan O'Leary <laughs> as he slides into his crease. <laughs> That's how you get, you know, pucks in net. Just hand deliver them, right? Um, you know what? On that rush, though, Giuliano did exactly what we haven't seen much of him do this tonight. And uh, that goalie really handled that puck shaky when he saw Giuliano bearing down on him. I think he panicked a little bit. He threaded the needle right through the slot, tried to get a good opportunity. As this one's out to the top, over to Giuliano, plays it Grace over to Cross. A great pass in front. Because that one's a save. Jeff, because the little things that you see right now from the Lancers, right? In a game that is out of hand and they know they're not going to win, but look at them working on their offensive chances. Is that one in front? Cross will put it in! 4-1 the score now. Jeremy Cross scoring it there. His first goal of the season to make it 4-1. That is an absolutely fantastic crisp offensive series from the Norton Lancers. Where has that been? That has been, that's fantastic. That was exactly the way it was drawn up. And again, this goes back, Javik, to the whole point of the Lancers haven't given up. They're playing against one of the top teams in the state, and maybe they're taking the foot off the gas a little bit. But Norton's working on things offensively that they, we haven't seen from them much this season. And that passing play, that was beautiful. Oh. The passing back and forth geometrically, getting it to the sideboards, and then feeding it through the slot, and getting that great opportunity. That's something we haven't seen from the Lancers all year long, and they really did that to a T. You know, and I want to credit Joey Giuliano for that because he made a really smart... Is that one in front? That one saved as Hopkins. He was trying to get the momentum right back on their side. Pass earlier. <laughs> as that one's blocked wide. So Hopkinson's not, not, not letting up here. They're really bearing down with the shot opportunities. And, well, they just don't want to give you time to talk, Greg. They don't like me very it's much. It's a high-powered, high-flying offense. As this one will be shoveled down the ice and Hopkinton will have to regroup 622 left in the game. And so the question becomes, did Norton just step on the hornet's nest and wake up Hopkinton again? As that one in front, Will Abbott trying to put a nice swing on it to give it home. But it doesn't work. Zapora shuts that one in front, that'll go wide. No. That works. And going down to the later parts of the season, the top five of the TVL will really be interesting. It's been, look at, see, a weird year for the TVL. A lot of upsets, a lot of parity. And the top of the standings is really jumbled. Changing yeah, think, week in, week out. I think a casual fan would never expect it to see Hopkinson in this position, but they certainly have shown tonight why they are where they are. Ooh. And that one standing <laughs> on the bench. Looks like it might have clipped Matt Lindquist. One chin of the goal strap. scorers tonight. A little chin strap rattle there, Javik. Make sure they're all awake on the bench. In about two months, they call that shin music. <laughs> when the snow melts. Oh, well, yeah. If. Yeah. I think it's an if. If, if the snow melts. Yeah. Lancer crowd still into it, Javik. And Donahue. Peter J. Wiggins leading the chance as always. He's one of those guys. Goes to every single game. This is a part of the Norton community. Really a fabric that's woven in. Yes. And you can find him anywhere Norton is. Anywhere. 
There is not a game he misses, I'll tell you that much. He's the Norton. most connected individual I've met in Norton, in fact. There's no place he can't get and no place he can't be. As this one in front of the Nets, that won't work as Hopkinton will try and go the other way with it. 5.03 left to go. And Hopkinton just trying to ride this one out. And Norton not letting him do it. Some more great offensive chances from the Lancers. Donahue sends this one down the ice. Tommy Whalen, we haven't said his name a whole lot tonight. He's getting back in the offensive zone. <laughs> Number seven, Temple just riding Gilbert into the boards. And Joe Giuliano to bring this one up. Sends it down the ice, and it's Matt Lindquist. Chipped it off the boards, Justin Goldstein flipping it forward. And Giuliano off touch up and go. And some big TVL matchups in play tonight. You have Westwood taking on Hopkinton, who's the number one team in the TVL at 9 1 1. Westwood at 5 3 and 2. That was a big game tonight. You had Denham versus Medway. Medway, another top five teams. And you had Bellingham, Ashland. Some of the bottom four teams, but Ashland have shown they've been very good this year. They have. And a handful for anybody, actually. They don't look it until they show up, but they really do, uh, they can frustrate you in a lot of ways. And just to put it in perspective, Ashland was a team Hopkinton buried. They won 7 nothing, and that one's offsides by about 100 feet. <laughs> As we'll get a face off back there, but Hopkinton, that was a game they controlled from the onset. They really put it on to Ashland, scored three or four goals in the first period, and that really set the tone. They won 7 nothing, and the Lancers only down 4-1 here. That's a big step. You know, I think that's a testament to the fact that this team just plays hard from start to finish. But uh, it was surprising to look at the scores of previous games with this team and see how they somehow you know, blew out teams that I would have thought would have given them more of a tough, more of a tough time. And this one's taken behind the net. Nope. As that one sent forward, Dose Race. Tipping that with the end of his stick. As Gallagher will swing it forward to Cersei. Cersei will bring it up. Through the neutral zone he goes. And plays it on forward. Mm. 318 left to go in the period. The shots right now. Good work by Kazadi behind the net. They stand at 41 to 10. Galger shot. That one blocked and sent wide. Down the ice. This one will go. An arm is raised. He's getting somebody behind the play. Oh. And Tony Cersei will go to the box. Ready, it'll be Brendan Hayden going to the box for two. You know, I kind of feel like that was that, that was behind the plate call, Javik, but I kind of feel like it was almost like retribution. The fans were really riding the referees about Kazadi's hit earlier, which was completely clean. He's just much bigger than the kid. They're going to give Hayden five minutes. Well, then it must have been more than what I saw. Confirmation for what exactly it was. I think they're going to give him five for cross-checking. And so then the question becomes, does he have to serve two and a half minutes in the next game? Like, how, how is that going to work, Shaver? The teams go to locker room and he sits in the penalty box for another couple minutes? So that one, an uneven draw, and we'll do it again. Maybe he doesn't participate in the handshake line. Like, what do they do? So TJ Sloan in the face-off dot for Holliston, for Hopkinton. They're up 4-1, 255 left in the third, and Greg, to be honest, I have no idea. Okay. Well, I just wanted some honesty from you, Javik. <laughs> We're going to need Mike Ferreira of the MIA to come out to explain that one. You have connections at the MIA, Javik. Why don't you give that guy a call? So this one will be brought up now. Connor Delaney bringing it into the zone. Lance will go shorthanded for the rest of this game. Atta boy. Brendan Hayden trying to get comfy in the penalty box. You might as well. He's going to be there till like Wednesday, I think, next week. Hopkinton will bring this one up through the neutral zone. 2.20 left in the third period. Yeah, big surprise. He wasn't going to pass the puck, Javik. So 2.10 left to go, third period. Next week we'll have two games, Monday and Wednesday, here on LSN. Wednesday senior night as the Lancers take on... Dedham and what should be a good game. They played him to a 5-5 tie earlier in the year as that one in front scored. Will Abbott wanting to get on the action and he does a power play goal. Now, Lancer's a little too casual behind their net with the penalty kill. 
bad turnover in front of the net leads to the goal. And Brendan Hayden remains in the box. 156 to go here. Abbott scoring at 13.04. One to get on the action. The score now 5-1 as we tick away. So the Lancer game against Edom. That's next Wednesday, senior night. And the one where you'll think they'll be playing for their playoff lives. They almost beat Tedham this year. They played him away. They almost scored with 23 seconds to go. It was a 5-5 tie. They were down 5-2 through two periods. Was able to score three goals in the third to tie that one up in one of the best comebacks of the year. So and tonight should be an exciting matchup. Monday should be a game against Stoughton. They handedly beat Stoughton 6-1. And Stoughton, they've had their troubles this year. They've allowed 135 goals. Mm. And they're 0-16 and 1. Is that one in front? Yeah, tough season for Stoughton wide. this year, Javik. And if you're Norton, you should be taking note. The foot is not off the gas in Hopkinton. I might take exception to that if I was a Norton player. They're going to the very end with this one. As that shot will go wide behind the net with less than a minute to go. 57 seconds left. Two goals scored on the period. DJ Sloan at 2.45 and Will Abbott just getting it done at 13.04. And Hopkinton hasn't been a team to, to shy away from rebound opportunities. And Triton Dose Race has given up just a bit too many tonight. And Hopkinton's taken advantage of it, as you'd expect from a number five team in the state. Nice play by Giuliano, not falling for the toe drag. 31 seconds to go now. Aiden, he'll be in the box for the remainder of this one as the Lancers on a penalty kill. Sixteen seconds to go now. Behind the net will be controlled by Hopkinton and the Lancers trying to get one last rush, mm. but it's taken away from Juliana with under ten to go, and that one will get out of the zone. Flip back in with four to go, and that's where we'll end it. Five-one, the final from the FSC is the Lancers' backs are now against the walls. They got to win five of their next six in order to make the turning. Yeah, tough game for the Lancers. I mean, you got to applaud the effort throughout the entire three periods. You know, I guess the team that's clearly going places in this tournament. LS in overtime coming up next. The number five Hopkinton Hillers approved to 11 2 and 1 as they solidify their tournament chances. The Lancers, backs are against the wall. 5 1 the final from the FSC. LS in overtime coming up next right here on the Lancer Sports Network. Hello folks, welcome to Ellison Overtime. I'm Javik Blake alongside Greg Bernal. And Greg, a tough loss for the Lancers losing 5-1, but a lot of positives to take out. Well, I would agree with you, Javik. I mean, they fought hard for the entire three periods. And against a team like this that can really put a hurt on you, they held their own for the most part in this game. And that third period really was a good period for the Lancers. They showed a lot of promise. Jeremy Cross scoring that goal. They had a lot of opportunities. But once again, that Hopkinton defense was just too much. Yeah, we saw some glimmers of hope from the Norton Lancer offense tonight in the third period. And whether that was a function of Hopkinton taking their foot off the gas or Norton just getting organized in the offensive zone and executing, uh, it doesn't really matter. It's something to take away from this game as you move forward. And the third period, until Jeremy Cross scored, the Lancers were really getting good continuity in the zone, creating a lot of pass. Then after Jeremy Cross scored, Hopkinton just put on the put their bet foot to the gas again, and they really just shut down the Lancers the rest of the way. And we said it before, it's tough to beat talent, and this team has talent. Um, so you're really just trying to survive against a team like Hopkinton. And then I think for the most part, you know, Norton came out of this game no worse for the wear. And Trent goes Ray's really playing one of the best games of the year. He had the string of highlight reel saves in the first period, and that really helped his chances and helped the Lancer chances going into that first intermission only being down one nothing. Yeah, it's almost becoming routine that we talk about Triton Dose Race's big games. Uh, and that continues tonight against Hopkinton. I guess the team has got, that may go far in the tournament, although I have my doubts. And sadly enough for Triton Dose Race, those games are ticking down. He's mm -hmm. going to graduate and play his final games in just a few weeks. And that's going to be a big hole for the Lancers, but they're very happy to have it while they have it. Yeah, I mean, we'll worry about next year next year, I guess, Javik. But it, you're right. that it, He's provided them very solid goaltending for a number of years now and it's going to be difficult to replace something like that and the final stats from tonight the Lancers with 10 shots on net the Hopkinton Hillers with 43 and penalty minutes was something that was the Lancers got into trouble with late with Brendan Hayden getting that five minute major so they ended up with 11 on the night but that penalty kill showed up big they were three for four yeah they look great on the penalty kill tonight I mean a team like this that can really pile up the goals and Norton figured out kind of what their strategy was in the power play and then were able to foil it and by the time that Brendan Hayden got in the box in the third period the game was out of hand anyway so at that point I really discount what happened in that power play and there was only one bad penalty kill they had 
Jordan Hopkins did a lot of chances, but they were able to force him outside of the slots mm -hmm. and make sure they don't get near the net in Trayton Dose race, which really worked to their benefit. Well, it did. That's the kind of thing they've been working on all season. I, it's good to know that they can do it against anybody, uh, even teams like this. Uh, it shows that they really work on it hard and that they know how to execute that part of their game. And the goal scorer in the third period, Jeremy Cross at 802, and DJ Sloan is second of the night at 245, and Abbott scoring at 1304. And Abbott was really a catalyst for this offense, but it was really Hopkinton as a whole. But the one problem for them was they were making one too many passes, one too many moves, one too many decisions, which cost them cost them a lot of goals. This could have been an eight nine nothing game had they just given their up their given their opportunities. Yeah, and I said that I have my doubts about their success in the tournament. I watched this team play, and as fast and as talented as they may be. They seem to try to get too cute at the wrong time, and I guess a team that can punch them in the mouth or equal talent, I wonder how that'll fare when a game like that comes about. They are playing a team with equal talent and able to punch them in the mouth on Saturday night as they play against Holliston, which should be a good matchup, two top teams in the TVL. Yeah, it'll be great to see how that one unfolds. It'll really shape the, the outcome of the TVL this season. And the Lancers in their next game to play at Ashland on Saturday as well, away in the Loring Arena, which should be a good matchup for the Lancers, but they got to come out with a big victory if they want to avoid having to win five straight to make it to the tourney. Well, you said it. they got to win five out of the next six. You really don't want to have to win five in a row, so winning Saturday night is big for the Lancers. So the final score here from the FSC, the Lancers losing to Hopkinton by a score of 5-1. And Greg, what's your final thoughts for tonight? Well, I think overall, none the worse to wear for the Lancers. They really battled hard all night. They, they, they gave Coach Grasso what he's always asked for, which is full effort for the full game. And I think against a team like this, where you knew it might not turn out your way, they didn't give up by the end of the third period. They're still hustling. They're still trying to create some offensive chances and still playing hard. I think that's what you take away from this game. So now comes the hardest part of the Lancers season, getting to the playoffs. This is Greg Murnell. I'm Javik Blake because we bid adieu from the Foxborough Sports Center. The final score here, Hopkinton beating the Lancers by a score of 5-1.